Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Edward. I host the show Heavy Cardboard. It's Sunday. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Uh, yeah, so enjoying a little uh, naughty, the Naughty Vicar tea from one of my patrons, so certainly appreciate y'all joining me today. It's Sunday. I thought it'd be a little bit more casual. My Canucks have won their series. They are officially in the playoffs, so uh, cheers, everybody. Oh, that's really good. It's got like a fruit, like a black currant flavor to it for a black tea. It's really weird. I don't really like fruit teas usually, but uh, with lemon being the exception, but uh, yeah, it is good stuff. So big thanks to Steve, Steven out there. So anyway, welcome everybody. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out today. We are busting out, as you can see behind me there, the wars of Marcus Aurelius. Uh, let's see here. One second. There we go. I, I forget, this one is not designed by uh, Tom from Hollenspiel. It is published by Hollenspiel, but designed by uh, Robert Deliski. Um, it's kind of a state of, uh, or, uh, states of siege, but with more, kind of is, is a good way to kind of describe this. So if you're familiar with those games, uh, this might be somewhat familiar with, uh, to you. And it's, it's a pretty simple game mechanically, but it's hard from everything I've, I've gathered. I've yet to play a full game, um, but from everything I've seen, uh, Tom struggles with this game. I saw Liz from Beyond Solitaire struggle with this game. Um, not struggle with the rules, but struggle with being able to beat the game. So uh, I expect that'll be no different for me, but it should be a good time. So if you guys are ready, I certainly appreciate uh, you guys hanging out. Like I said, like, subscribe, support the show over on pledgehc.com if that is your bag. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm going to give an overview when I do, as I do for all solo games, and then we're just going to get into it, and we'll walk through all of the uh, how to play and everything as we go along. So without further ado, let's get into the wars of Marcus Aurelius. All right. So here we go. Let's fix that. There we go. All right, here we go. I think it's an interesting little uh, blurb here at the beginning of the rule book. So let me, uh, let me read this to you. 170 CE, plague ravages the empire. With the legions depleted by disease and spread thin across the endless frontier, opportunistic German tribes and fierce Sarmatian raiders strike across the Danube, Danube uh, deep into imperial, ter uh, imperial territory. With Rome facing its most serious barbarian invasion in 300 years, Emperor Marcus Aurelius, an untested commander-in-chief who has never set foot outside of Italy, must transform himself from an introspective philosopher into a cunning warrior and fearless leader. So, Wars of Marcus Aurelius, solitaire CDG-flavored strategic-level game set during the Marcomannic Wars, playing from the perspective of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, your goal is to pacify three different tribes while managing off-map wars and rebellions, troops shortages, and limited resources, and the effects of plague. Oh, all right. Oh, wait. All while maintaining your standing with the army, the Senate, oh, and the people of Rome. So basically, not a whole lot going on here, really. It's really not that much, <clears throat> says the guy who isn't living his life. All right, so what are you looking at here? Uh, so we have the map. We have the three different tribes. We have the Marco Mani here. We have the Quadi. And then we have the Izagis, I think is how you say that. Uh, if not, that's how we're going to say it today. There, all right? And those are represented by their chits out here on the board. Now, basically what's going to happen is each of these three tribes is going to move south and they're going to come towards these boxes. Bad things happen when these guys get into the boxes. We're going to try and avoid having that happen. If these guys make it into Rome, Rome, game over, the end. 
So let's let's definitely avoid that. All right. Up top we have the year. That is the year track. So basically that is uh, every year is is a game round. And then the round marker is the turn, or I, I should say the year marker is the turn track. And then the round marker is the round. Spring, summer, winter, and housekeeping there. We have an Imperium track here. Basically what this is, is if this drops and goes here, I die. Game over immediately. That's bad. Let's not let that happen. And if it's anywhere else, okay. If it makes it all the way up to the very top, <laughs> good luck with that. But if it does, then if it's there at the beginning of a year, then I get to draw an extra card. Cool. All right. Good stuff. Surrender tribe box. All right. This area over here is the recovery, meaning these guys have already kind of been damaged. They've already seen battle this year, so they're unavailable to me for this year over here. Now, unactivated legions and leaders, these are going to come into play in a card play. So those four chets there, those two are leaders, and then we have various types of legions over there. All right, then down below, there are the holding boxes for each of the three areas. So this box right here is going to be for the Marco Mani, uh, this box is going to be for the Quadi, and this box is going to be for the I Izagis here. In addition to that, to the left of it is where the leaders are going to be. All right, so Marcus Aurelius, hi. I'm a Gemini, I like Chinese food. So there you go, that's Marcus Aurelius. His son, um, Pompey, I'm going to, ha, ah, I struggle with this every time I try and say it. Pompeianus, I think. I think is how you say it. Anyway, so he uh, has been delegated by me uh, to run some number of legions over here, and I've chosen to set that up for the Izagis. I'll get into this stuff over here when it comes into play, pretty much. We have the Barbarian deck. They're going to be drawing three cards every round, and we have the Roman deck, Huzzah! Those I'm going to be drawing based on what season we are in. And it's going to be a CDG. Basically what I'm going to be doing is we're going to start at the beginning of the game with a Roman turn, then we'll go Barbarian, the Roman, Barbarian, Roman, moving this up, drawing cards, playing cards, and basically having battles keeping these guys at bay, hopefully. So, you might be asking yourself, self, how do you go ahead uh, how do you win and how do you lose? All right, well, I'm glad you asked that. So let's go over that. First and foremost, how do I win? Well, there is a win or lose step check, and that is if all three tribes have been pacified, if there have been truces with all three tribes, when, during that check, hey, woot, I win. Otherwise, okay, there's a lot of ways to lose. All right, the game ends immediately if the Imperium Marker makes it down to the Usurped. I am Usurped. That's really bad, okay? Also, if the Barbarians uh, enter Rome, meaning the Marco Mani, enter Rome, game ends immediately. Or, if after the end, when we get to end, the game ends, and uh, uh, unfortunately that's when Marcus Aurelius died, and if I haven't pacified all three of them, then... Uh, then then I lose. All right, now there is some scoring. I'll go over that uh, as we go along. Uh, as far as, oh, how bad did you lose? How good did you win? That type thing. Other than that, I think we get into it. Let's go and get started, shall we? Now, full disclosure, I will be using a couple of player aids here. These are over on BGG and definitely recommend them. This one is a little bit more verbose and a little bit more uh, detailed. This one is a little bit more concise, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever flavor uh, works for you, all right? All right, States of Siege. Thank you, Chris. That's the name of it. I, oof. It's been a rough day for me personally. It's just kind of been really anxious and not really been myself. So yeah, eh, words, they happen. Um, also, these are the three dice that come with the game. We're not gonna use these because honestly, uh, they're the same. And I wanna be able to roll Roman and Barbarian at the same time for combat. So we're not gonna use these today. Instead, we are going to use the black and red, I'm sorry, the black and green die for the Barbarians, which have a green deck, and the red die for the Romans, cause red, duh, all right. Oh, <laughs> Kushigra, uh, you better win this one. Marcus never lost. 
and hope your wife doesn't cheat on you while you're saving your empire. Also, continue to keep journaling because the world needs your book. Like, I don't have enough going on here. All right? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the game starts with a redeployment step. So, or every round, every, mm, let me try that again, every year starts with a redeployment step. So what does that mean? Basically what that means is all of the legions and all of my leaders. So right now I have Marcus Aurelius and Pompeianus here. Those are my two available leaders. And I have a total of 10 legions at my disposal, at my disposal. I may freely mix and match and move them between any of the three uh, regions here, or I can actually send them over to the off-map conflict area, all right? But redeployment has already technically gone on, because why? Because this is how I chose to do it. You are capped at six legions in any one of the areas, whether it's the Western or Eastern Empire for off-map conflicts, or whether it is any of the three regions here. I have chosen uh, six legions here, and I chose to put Marcus Aurelius with it, and then I chose four legions over here with Pompeianus uh, for the Izagis, all right? Now, does it have to be that way? No, I could have gone five and five, I could have gone three, three, and four. However, I wanted to mix and match it also. Legions do not have to have leaders. Leaders do have to have legions, however. All right, so you will never see something like that. That is a no-no. Whereas this is okay, that is not. All right, cool. So you can freely move these any way you want at the beginning of each year. But since that's already happened during setup, okay, we're done. And then that's where those three uh, tribes start. The Quadi cannot attack until uh, a certain uh, uh, event happens, so let's go ahead and go in. Now, Barbarian phase. Normally, they would go first. However, in the first year, they do not go first. Yes, I am a huge Vancouver fan. A, they were the closest team to Portland, and B, uh, my very best friend and longest friend, I should say, uh, Jody over in British Columbia. He is the one who got me into hockey. He is a, was, before I believe uh, uh, his youngin was born, a uh, season ticket holder. And yeah, I am a huge Canucks fan. And living in Boston, that hurts, because I still remember 2011. I'm still bitter, and I really hate Brad Marchand. The end. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So, no barbarian phase uh, right now. So, we go into a Roman phase. So, here we go. We are in the spring of the first year. It says right here, we're going to draw five cards. So let's go ahead and shuffle up and deal. A little poker reference there. Hey, if you guys enjoy this, give it a thumb. I appreciate it. If you don't, don't give it a thumb. Or give it a thumb down. That'd be even better than no thumb. Because that gives me feedback. And I appreciate it. And Oh, also, a big thank you to uh, Andrew from my game group. Andrew Clock. Uh, he let me borrow his copy of this because I don't have a copy of this yet. Um, I have every intention of probably getting one, though, because I think we're going to, A, want to see this again, and B, I'm probably going to want to play this again. All right, there we go. All right, shall we cut? Let's cut. There we go. So what do you all got going on this Sunday, other than obviously spending some of your Sunday with me, which I really, really appreciate, y'all. All right. All right. I use the in-depth one to start with here. All right, so draw five cards. All right, you know what? Oh no, a moment, I forgot I unplugged something. While it's not necessary, it just makes my life easier. All right, let's hope that works. Hey, it worked, there we go, all right. All right, so let's draw our five cards, shall we? Whoop, too far. There we go. By the way, can you guys read these okay? You only check your hand size at the end of a uh, at the end of uh, the year, so we don't need to worry about that right now. So there we go. Those are our five cards. Let's go ahead and go over them. I may not go over them in detail. Uh, every every uh, card draw, but here we go. Reputation of Rome. On a Roman turn, choose any two barbarian armies and demoralize them. Awesome. All right, that, what that means is flip them over to their weaker side. 
So whenever you see a little black circle in the background, that means they're demoralized. That doesn't suck. Now, just like a CDG, you can choose to either use the card as the event or in, uh, to be able to do other things. And I will go over what those other things are here after I go over the cards. Local guides, battle before dice roll. Discard this card to reduce the terrain value by half in one battle. Round up, one, two becomes one, three, four becomes two, so on and so forth. That's going to come into play when we get into battles with these numbers up here, but we'll cover all that here when we battle. Route, after a Roman victory, move a defeated army back two spaces, normally they just move back one, towards their home space. Flip them to their demoralized side. This is a pretty good draw so far, because again, these guys are gonna move south, I'm gonna wanna push them north, everyone drives home in a Cadillac. Winter quarters, Roman turn during winter. Okay, that's pretty specific. Uh, make up to two attacks during one winter round. Do not suffer a minus one on these attacks. Normally we would because it really sucks attacking in winter. Okay, cool, good deal, all right? And battle on the ice, I, there we go. Battle on the ice, uh, and note the asterisk. I will cover that here in a minute. Roman turn during winter again. Discard this card to fight and win a battle against the Izagis and flip them to the, to the demoralized during the winter round. Cannot be used in the Izagis' home space. If played for the event, discard to the history pile. Okay, that's what that asterisk means, is discard to the history pile. This is going to count for a score for us. Uh, either whether we win or lose, how bad did we lose, how well did we win type thing. So um, if played for the event, discarding it to the history pile, that's a good thing. So it kind of motivates you to uh, want to use this as the, uh, as the event. Okay. All right. Um, so home spaces, now that that got brought up, home spaces are where it says home. I know, who knew? But uh, here we go. The Marco Mani. Uh, Marco Mani start here, as do the Izagis, whereas the Quadi start in their home and they cannot attack. Now, the number down here at the bottom is just for reference. Uh, there's a little uh, guide in the back of the rule book if you have any questions on it, etc., etc. Now, you might be asking yourself, self, okay, so I know I can use these for events. What else can I use these cards for? Here we go. Attack a barbarian army or an off-map conflict. So off-map conflict are these. Whenever there is a card that comes out that will be placed there, we'll cover that when we get there. But just know that it's basically like fighting these guys is essentially it, but it's also, it's off-map. Obviously, uh, the Marcomani legions here can fight the Marcomani. They can't fight the Quadi, et cetera, et cetera. So these can fight them, nobody, and these can fight them, et cetera. So attack a barbarian army or off-map. Okay. Advance... Uh, the Imperium marker, up one, wherever it is, unless it's usurped, because the game's over. All right, so discard a card, do that. Add two level one forts. Now, basically, what these forts do is there is a level one fort, so a plus one attack, all right, or a level two fort. Now, whenever you place forts, forts are only placed uh, north of the Danube or east of the Danube. So basically, it has to be on the outside, not the Italy side of the Danube here. So in other words, it's got to be placed here, here, or here to start. You must always start at the bottom space in a given uh, region, and then work up from there, all right? So you can place two level one forts. So for instance, I could place a level one fort there, and I could place a level one fort there, or maybe I place one there and one there, et cetera. What I cannot do is I cannot place anywhere uh, below or above a spot that does not already have a fort. Does that make sense? I think so, I think it's pretty clear. All right, another option, so discard a card to, level, to add two level one forts, or I could discard a card to upgrade one fort to a level two. Whoop, okay, it's twice as good as a level one. All right. Basically what forts do is they absorb hits and they kind of pin the various tribes wherever they are and slow them down from being able to advance if I wish them to. 
okay? Uh, I do want to point out that if it were something along the lines of like this, so the, this is a level one, this is a level one, and I choose to discard one of my cards to make one a level two. You must always make the bottom most one that is not a level two, a level two before you can do the top one. So I cannot do this one before I do this one. Okay, good. All right, cool. Moving on. Next is transfer a leader between armies. Okay, now there is one clarification on this that I want to make sure. Now, you can only... Uh, one second. Yeah, you can only transfer a leader between armies unless the fleets are in play. Okay, there are a couple of uh, fleet markers in Upper Danube or Lower Danube fleet marker, they're interchangeable, whatever, okay? But as long as those are not on the board, then only leaders can move around. So this guy, discard a card, Marcus can come over here. Obviously he can't because there's no legions, but if there were, you get the idea. Or I could spend one card to flip-flop, meaning that goes there and that goes there. You can never have more than one leader uh, for a region of legions, okay? All right, so those can change. However, one of the other things you can do, all right, is you can add, uh, discard a card to add the upper or the lower Danube fleet marker. So discard a card and put one there, or discard a card and put one there. Or technically you could discard two cards and, you know, put them both there. You might be asking yourself, self, why would I want to put these out here? Well, I mentioned that without them, only leaders can be transferred, right? Whereas with the fleets, you can now transfer between legions. However, as you might could imagine, the upper Danube, you can only transfer between here and here freely, obviously discarding a card to do so. And the lower, you can only uh, transfer between here and here. If you have both, you can mix and match however you want between any two of them. Um, la, la, da, 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 da. No, check that. By discarding a single card, you can completely or reorganize the leader and legionary deployment in the Danube army boxes. But obviously not the recovery or the offboard, uh, the ones not in play. So if you have both fleets, you can just discard one card and mix and match however you want. Maybe things are going bad, whatever. Okay? All right. So. Last but not least, during a round, you can discard two cards to transfer up to six legions and one leader from any mix and match Danube region to an off-map conflict. All right? However, Transferring legions and leaders to off-map conflict spaces, uh, those do not require the fleets because they're technically going off somewhere, either to the Western Empire or the Eastern Empire, and presumably the fleets aren't the Danubes, they're bigger fleets, whatever. Doesn't matter, okay? And just like these, you can have a max of six in each of those locations, okay? However, off-map armies and leaders cannot be transferred between off-map conflicts or back to the Danube during a round, okay? But you can freely do so during the, the deployment step, all right? And anybody that, if I have guys out here fighting, they destroy whoever's here, those go into the recovery box and those are not available till next year because it takes a while for them to come on back. That makes sense, right? All right, good. All right, so let's rehash that real quick. I can play a card for the event, or I can discard a card to attack a barbarian army, advance the Imperium marker, I can add two forts for discarding one card, I can flip a level one fort to a level two fort for discarding one card, I can transfer a leader between armies, if the fleets exist, I can transfer armies for discarding one, or I could add a, the upper Danube fleet or the lower Danube fleet for discarding a card. Uh, and I can use two cards to transfer up to six legions and a leader to an off-map uh, conflict space. Done. There you go. Those are the things I can do. All right.
All right, good. Just checking up cat, uh, catching up with chat. All right, so let's go ahead and do this, shall we? Um, well, let's take a look at our cards. I'm not going to reorganize, obviously. I'm happy where the Imperium marker is. I think that's okay. Uh, you know what? I think... I mean, well, let's look. If we demoralize from a four to a two and a four to a two, yeah, let's go ahead and bust that out. So we will go ahead and play Reputation of Rome. Choose any two barbarian armies and demoralize them. Okay, done. All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and put the discards up here. That is not the history pile to point out. So I will demoralize this one. I will demoralize them. I probably ought to take my forts off there. Done. All right. Uh, all right, so now, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and battle, right? Ah, uh, what card? I think I'm going to actually use local guides because the terrain values really aren't that bad for me right now. So let's go ahead and discard the local guides, and now we're going to battle, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about battling here, all right? So we will go ahead here, and I'll use Marcus uh, as the representative here, up here. So we're going to go ahead and battle the Marco Omani, all right? Hey, Thomas. All right, so... What's going to happen is we are going to add, and I, it's just easier for me to look it up this way because it's laid out actually really clearly in the rule book, I think a little bit better than the uh, player aids. So the number of legions in the box, there are six, so that's six. The leader's combat value, so Mar uh, Marcus Aurelius is on his three. His sad side, i.e. his demoralized side, is a one, but it's not there. It's a three, so I'm now at nine, all right? Any forts, I would add those numbers. A level one adds a one, a level two adds a two. If there are multiple, I, whatever. Um, I'm sorry, it, obviously you can only have one fort in each space. So in this space, this space, this space. So there can never be more than one fort. So I digress, so it can only be a plus one or a plus two. But six and three is nine, add any forts there. And if it were winter, I would go minus one. So I'm at nine. Whereas the barbarians are at two because they're on their demoralized side and two. So it's nine to four plus the die rolls. Bad things happen uh, if you roll ones and good things happen if you roll sixes for you and vice versa for the bad guys. All right, so I had nine plus three is 12, four plus four is eight. Um, if my math is right, 12 is bigger than 8. Ergo, we win. Yay. So what happens when you win? Barbarian tribe retreats one space. Boom. Okay, done. Good job. Now, what would have happened if the barbarians won? We lose a legion from the battle, and they go into the recovery box. So I lose them for the rest of that round. Okay. All right, that was, that was pretty simple. Uh, if it's a tie, re-roll. Now, do want to point out something. You are allowed, every time you roll the dice, you can discard one card and one card only of your hand to add a plus one. So it can turn a, uh, a, you know, a loss by one into a tie, which means you re-roll, or it could turn a tie into a victory but you have to discard a card. Now, if you tie, or let's say it was going to be a loss of one, so you discard a card, it's now a tie, and you re-roll, then it's a tie again. You can now discard another card because it's an independent thing. It's a new roll to make it a plus one, which means you win. But you are not allowed to discard two cards to give it a plus two in a single action. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? All right, now, what happens if uh, roll one? The barbarians are emboldened. Okay, 
What that means is we flip them from their sad side to their happy side. Okay? All right? Uh, sorry, if it's a one, I got these backwards. If it's a one, it demoralizes them if they're not already demoralized. If they're demoralized, leave it. If it's a six, they're emboldened. Flip it onto their happy side. If it's already there, nothing happens. Okay, whereas for us, it affects the Imperium marker. So, if it's a six, yay, happy, move up. One, sad, boo, move down. Okay, boom, done. Very, very simple, okay? Now, if the Barbarians win, uh, following a Barbarian win, if there is a fort, a fort occupying the space can prevent the loss of a Legion by reducing the fort level one level. So a two to a one or a one back into the supply. So it basically absorbs a hit for you, okay? All right, cool, yay. All right, so we have cards now. So we can continue playing cards or we can stop. Hmm. Oh, and I totally misspoke about something. You are allowed to have a maximum of five cards in your hand at the end of a round, not at the end of a year. So check that, okay? Also, you are allowed to uh, save one a bonus card over here in Meditation 1. Meditation 2 is not available unless that event comes into play. All right, so as it is, we can save one card, but we're not worried about that for right now. All right, good. Excellent. All right. So, what do we want to do now? Um, we could push them back one more space, but they're already demoralized, and it kind of loses the value of that. So, I think we wait to use that card for the event. And these are during winter. So, okay. So, now the question is, do we fight some more, or do we just say, hey, and we'll go into uh, the next phase? I don't know. Or the next round. Kushigura says build forts. Ah, uh, I could do that. All right, I'll go ahead and play the winter quarters card and I'll build a couple forts. So I will build one here. question is, do I build them both here to help with the Marcomani? Ooh. No, I don't. I think I'm going to build them both here. So they're both there. Done. And now I think I'm done. I think I'm done with, uh, with the round, with the spring round. Okay, yes, I can continue fighting the tribe. I can keep pounding on them if I want. And maybe I should. You know what? You make a compelling argument here, Kusha Girl. Let's go and do it. Let's go ahead and play this uh, just for the card. So we're going to go ahead and fight them again. All right. So we're going to fight the Marco Omani. So it is, again, it's nine to six now because they have a, uh, they're at a plus four because we're getting closer to their home area. All right, so nine to six. I feel pretty good about that. All right, let's go. Ah, dice tower keeps eating dice. There we go. Well, that worked out. So first off, that goes up because we rolled a six and we were already up three. We're now up five. So that's going to be a victory. Yay. They move them on back. Excellent. And an extra Imperium. Yeah, I can, I, if you wanted, with all five cards, I could have gone hit, 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 like, or attack, attack, attack. I could have totally done that. Yes, I can keep doing that. I do not have to mix and match. I just, it's the order in which I chose to do that. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so I am going to go ahead and hold on to that card, however. So I am now done with that round. So we are now going to go into summer, okay? So, uh, 
Here we go. So summer, the barbarian phase happens first. Okay. Um, so barbarians are going to get three cards. We're going to activate them one, two, and three. Okay. I'm going to get three cards and then discard down to five. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my three and we'll go and check those out. So ordered retreat. After a Roman defeat, play this event card when you lose a battle to avoid losing one legion. Okay, cool. It can be used in off-map conflicts. Nice. Okay, all right. Commodus. Uh, Imperium plus two. So I'd put us at seven. I'm just saying. Or end a mutiny. If you use this card to end the legion's demand don uh, donative, donative, uh, mutiny. You gain no Imperium, but you lose none either. If played for the uh, either event, discard two, the history pile. Again, asterisk. Okay. And Gallon. Uh, after a Barbarian card draw, discard to disregard the effects of Plague or Plague Worsens from the current Barbarian card draw, i.e. do not lose troops or one Imperium. Okay. All right. So that's where we're at. Okay. So a moment. Actually, I want to double check something. Hold on. I actually think... Yeah, no, I don't draw those yet. I didn't think so. So I do not have those cards. Okay. All right, so Barbarian phase is going to happen first. So these three cards that I just drew, we know I'm going to draw them. So I'm just going to put them on top of the deck. Technically, the Barbarian phase happens completely and totally. So here we go. Just... uh. I'm sure you guys will probably be able to read them up here, but I'm going to, for the first time at least, I'm going to go ahead and put them out here, okay? So, here we go. Quiet on the Danube. Do not draw any more Barbarian cards this round. I kid you not, I have shuffled these, and that's a pretty awesome thing. So those other two cards, go back to the top of the deck. Barbarian phase over. Cool. So, that goes into the Barbarian discard. Wow. How you like me now? Maybe I just knew that was going to happen, so my three cards that I drew. <laughs> All right. Well, hell yeah. All right. Um, so they're at eight. I'm at nine. <laughs> uh, well, I'm at five. They're at six. You know what? No guts, no glory. So. I'm going to go ahead and use the gallon card. Oops. And we are going to go ahead and pound on the Marco Mani again. So it's nine to eight. So here we go. Hot damn. Imperium goes up, and uh, as long as this number is not less than that, we're good. So they move it on back. Okay. So now it would be 10. Now we would be at a minus one. <laughs> you know what? Let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's go ahead and try and hit them again. Let's, one time. Here we go. So it's nine for us, ten for them. And I'm going to go ahead and... Oh. I'm actually... Hi. I'm going to use the Battle on the Ice card. Do I... Winter's coming... Because this would be an automatic win against the Izagis. You know what? I'm not going to, so hold on. Mm. 
I don't know whether or not I really want to worry about the the, dis, the history pile with the Commodus card. Because if I don't, I don't mind discarding this for the battle, but I really don't know about the score, whether or not... Ah. You know what? No guts, no glory. Let's go ahead and do it. We're going to use the Commodus card. Hey, Jess. All right, so we're going to discard the Commodus card. It's 9 to 10, so we need to roll two higher here. Hot damn, boom, Imperium pegged out, and, and, so technically, they come over to the Surrender Tribe. So let's see here, uh, a moment real quick. You would think I would, like, this would be, like, obvious. Um, a moment. If any tribes have surrendered and a surge or oathbreaker event occurs, I have to roll to see if they break their oath, meaning the Marco Mani still might come back into play. Okay? All right. Nice. All right, so they're just chill now. All right, we're done. So we're not at five cards, we're good. We're gonna go ahead and stop there. So now we will go into winter. In winter, the barbarians are going to draw three cards. So again, I will go and scoop mine over because I don't get any of my cards or my one card yet. So we're gonna go ahead and one, two, and three. And let's go ahead and do this, shall we? All right, quaddy. Advance the quaddy forward one space or flip uh, from the demoralized uh, to their bold. Add this card to the surge pile. I'll explain that here in a minute. If the quaddy are under temporary truce or have surrendered, then Marco Mani activate instead. If they are under, then the Izagi. Uh, add this card to the surge pile. Okay, so now. The Quadi begin 170 CE at peace with the Empire and you cannot attack them. When the first Quadi activation occurs, remove the Quadi cannot attack marker and advance the Quadi one space. You can now attack the Quadi. Okay? So, all right. So, Quadi there and now they're down. I guess I can put it right there. Boom. They are in play. Hey, Luke, what's up? All right, so that is that. Then add the card to the surge pile. Okay. So we have played one Barbarian and the surge. Now, we haven't talked about the surge. By the way, can you guys read this to where then I won't bother moving them down into the other camera if you can, all right? The surge pile, what happens is basically when this gets a third card in here, then whatever tribes did not activate from the card activation, then activate. So it basically is just a, a surge. So basically when the, uh, if it's say the uh, Aquati ends up here and then a Marco Mani ends up there, then the Marco Mani would have just activated, in theory, even though they're in truce, I digress. Then the other tribes, regardless of what cards have been played here, will then activate, meaning the Aquati and the Izagi because that was the Marco Mani card. All right, cool. Now. I can choose to discard a card from my hand, though, to keep it from going into the surge, and it just gets discarded after being played and activated. So, there's that. All right, here we go. No one's talking, uh, barely possible to read on the board. All right, so we'll keep it down here. Thank you, Martha. Morale collapses. 
All demoralized barbarian armies immediately retreat one space towards their home space. Ignore if they are already in their home space. All demoralized barbarians. Wow. You mean like the Izagi? And, again, uh, ew, you know what? Hold on one moment. Yeah, all right. There. And the third card. You know what? No, I guess I don't. Give me just one second. I don't think I add that one to the search pile. Card number 32, right? Uh, other, other deck. Looking at the back. Fighting against the largest, best equipped, and best led professional army in the world had to take a toll on barbarian morale now and then. All right. So now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I only, you know what? I'm going to actually look at these and then reshuffle them. History, Surge. Only if it says add to the surge, I believe, is when you actually do so. I, yeah, I think so. Okay, so hold on one second. Let me double check this. Because I thought all cards go into the surge pile. But maybe I'm wrong. So, a moment. Yeah, I think only the ones that say that, but I'm just trying to verify. Hold on. Because in the rule book, um, after you resolve a barbarian activation card, oh, I guess technically we didn't activate barbarians. So I would argue that, that it only if it says, put it in the surge pile. Because that way, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so check that. That goes over there. Excellent. All right. Well, how you like me now? All right. This is going not terribly. All right. Oops. One second. There we go. Izagi Calvary. This is not a good card for me, I believe. Izagis, activate twice. Advance the Izagis forward two spaces or flip from demoralized to bold and advance one space, then add it to the surge pile. Yeah. <laughs> so, flip for one and now to two. Well, there's that. All right. So that's his three cards. Oh, by the way. Uh, one thing I did also did not mention is there is a stack of cards over here for both decks called Late War. Those come into play at the beginning of 175 uh, CE, and I just put them there as a reminder. So that's why they're there. All right. Yeah, good point, Kushigura. Good point. All right. So now it is my turn. Uh, Roman, uh, I get to draw one card. And remember, all battles are minus one for me now. Okay. So... Here we go. Action card. Discard this card to take one action. Okay. Meaning, meh, it's just an action card. Okay. All right. Well, what do we want to do? I said I was going to shuffle the uh, Barbarian deck. Make sure they're facing the right way. There we go. Uh, what should we do? What should we do? 
Well, I was going to attack the Izagi for sure. Uh, oh, you know what? We're going to do the battle on the ice. Discard this card uh, to fight and win a battle against the Izagis. Just, you win a battle. And flip them to the demoralized side. And during the winter round, cannot be used in the Izagi home space. If played for the event, discard it to the history pile. All right, and cut. There we go. You know what? That's a long reach. We're just going to put it right here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, play Battle on the Ice. So that'll go into the history pile. Um, so these... Where could we go that represents the history? You know what? Way up here. And I'll put them sideways. So that's into the history pile there. All right. So demoralize and bump them back one because we win. Way to go, P Pompeianus. So, done. Um, do we want to keep any cards? I Do we want to keep going? I don't think we want to keep going. Because um, that's 12 to 0, obviously. And that's 8 to 5. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, so we're going to move into housekeeping now. And housekeeping says a uh, fort attrition check. Let me go ahead and work through these. Um, roll a D6 for every fort on the map. A roll of six reduces a fort one level. All right, so I'll do the red for the top one and the black for the bottom. Has this thing rolled anything but a six so far? That's unfortunate, so this one goes away because it drops one level. So there we go. All right, then uh, forts out of supply. Any fort in enemy territory with a fort below it is eliminated. So in other words, if I that one had been eliminated and not that one, then this one would drop a level. But as it is, we're fine. No big deal. Uh, hold on one second. All this making sense to you guys? You guys following along? All right. Uh, remove the temporary truce marker if there is one. Uh, flip Marcus Aurelius uh, from Demoralize to Bold if he was. Discard any cards that remain in your hand. Oh, there's that. That's right. I forgot about that. I'm going to discard every. So I might as well do something. I can keep one card. I will go ahead and keep one in the meditation the ordered retreat, and I can do something with this. So you know what? Let's go and build some forts with it since I'm gonna lose it anyways. So I will go ahead and put one here. And you know what, actually, I'm gonna put one there and one there. Yeah, I think I like that better. Okay. So now discard any cards I had left in my hand. I now have none left in my hand because I'm saving the one there. If there are any uh, off-map conflicts, lose an Imperium uh, per conflict. We don't. If the Marco Mani or the Quadi are south of the Danube, deduct one per tribe. Again, that's why these are here to represent that. If, it's, uh, if it dropped to the Usurp, you lose. Advance the year marker, one. And there we go. All right. I don't know that 170 could have gone much better. Um, yeah. So redeployment. Move leaders and legions from any army box off map uh, and recovery box. So I now get these two back into play. All right. So there can be a max of six in any one. So I think we're just going to do that and then... Those guys will go over here. The Quadi are no joke, man. These guys are beasts. Is that a two or three? That's a three on the other side. We got to get those guys demoralized. So I think that's what we're going to do for, uh, for the redeployment there. Yeah, I'm good with that. So now, welcome to spring, and the barbarians go first. Oh, good call, Martha. I do have to uh, roll for attrition because I backed it up and I did those first. So here we go. Good call. 
red up here up top. All right, so no sixes, so it, it can roll something other than a six. All right, so we're safe. Thank you, Martha. We're good. So, Barbarian, three cards for them. So here we go. Card number one, Scandal Faustina. Oh, Faust oh, ba oh, hold on. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Because barbarians go first. Right? I lose an IP, which means I don't get the extra card draw now. Gah, that's dirty. And it doesn't say to add it to the surge, so that's one. Boo. Izagis. Advance the Izagis forward one space or flip from demoralized to bold. Add the card to the surge. Huh. All right. So, they're demoralized, so they automatically flip over. Do we let it add to the surge? I think we do. All right. So, a surge happens. We do have a card technically saved that we could use to prevent the others from advancing, but you know what? I'm okay with that. After you resolve a Barbarian activation card, add it to one of the surge spaces. When the third card is placed, the two tribes that did not activate are activated. In effect, a surge results in all tribes activating. After resolving the surge, remove the three cards from the surge space, place them in the discard pile. If a, true, uh, if a tribe is surrendered, its card is still added to the surge space. But, okay. Um... Oh, you know what? They're not at truce. I, that's what's confusing me. They just are surrendered. Okay. Okay, surges also cause oathbreak checks. Oathbreaker checks. So, I have to roll a d6 and compare the number. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that. This is dumb. I forgot. All right, so Oathbreaker. Roll a d6. Oh, you know what? I'm going to play this card and discard it to prevent the surge. <coughs> and the reason for that, let me go through what an Oathbreaker is. Roll a d6 and compare the number to the number of legions in that army box. Uh, plus any attached leader's combat value, plus the number of all level two forts in that tribe's territory. Level one forts don't matter. That's the pacification value. If the die roll is greater than the pacification value, the tribe breaks their treaty and re, uh, resumes the offensive. So in other words, uh, it's zero. So they roll the die, they would automatically come back out. I don't want that to happen because yours truly was dumb. I forgot to leave somebody over here. So... That's okay. We're going to prevent it by discarding the card that we had in meditation. That was poor planning on my part. I forgot. My bad. Okay. The barbarians are done. We now draw five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Marcomani and the quadi fronts only. Place two level two forts on any eligible spaces. One per space. Or flip uh, two level one forts to level two, or place a level one and flip a level one to a level two. That's going to come in handy. Um, yeah, that's really, really good. Okay. Uh, auction in the forum of the deified Trajan. You get a plus two on the Imperium track or draw two new cards. Hand size of five at the end of the round remains in effect. If played for the either event, discard it to the history pile. Force March, discard this card to move up to six legions and one leader from any Danube front to one off-map conflict. Vexilations. Vexilations. Uh, transfer any number of Roman legions and leaders between any of the Danube uh, army boxes. Essentially allows you to reorganize your entire military deployment along the Danube without requiring the Danubian fleet. Well, this is timely. You may not move legions or leaders from the recovery bot. Right. Okay. Marcus uh, Valerius Maximanius. Maxim 
Max Manius. Yeah, I had it right. Discard the card, plus one other, to add the leader Maximanius to the any Danubian army or off-map conflict. He's a level... Ooh. Successfully playing the single combat event gets you... Uh, successfully playing the single combat event gets you this card for free. If played for the event, discard to the history pile. Oh, I so think I know what I want to do with three of these cards now. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the Markamani first. Markamani and Quadi Fronts only place two level two forts. Don't mind if I do. So we're going to go one there for sure. It just makes sense for me to do this, I think. There. So that is now plus two to pacify up there. So that is going to be the Markamani card. Okay. Next. They're at ten. Oof. Um... Seven, that could be an eight if I bring Maximanius out. I think having that third leader is going to be really important for me. So, I'm going to basically get a free transfer. Yeah. Without the, without the fleets in effect. So I'll discard that. I'm going to put 5, that's 8, to 12. Oof. Mm. I'm going to move one legion over to the Marcomani. I'm going to move Pompeia. Yeah, there. That gives me four there. So two for the forts and two for their four. So as long as he doesn't roll a five or a six on a surge, I should be okay. It's a two-thirds favor. I, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. All right, so then I'm going to play this for the event. And so I discard this card plus one other to bring in uh, Maximanius. Maximianus. Maximianus? Maximus. There you go. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and discard both of those, but because I'm playing it for the uh, event, this goes into the history pile. So that will go there. This will go there. And then Maximus is going to come out there. And he will take over that. Okay. I'm happy with that. We have one card left. Now the question is... That gives us 8 to 10. You know what? I'm thinking I'm going to hold off right now. I think that's all I'm going to do. I think. I think. Hold on one second. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do for this. That's it. So let's go ahead and go here. So it's going to be three Barbarian cards. So I'll move my card over there. There we go. All right. Card number one. Hey. Izagi's Cavalry. So they're going to activate twice. They're going to move forward twice. So one, two. Okay. So they're there. And it will go into the Surge. So now both of these will activate. All right. So first thing, the Markamani are going to roll. And for the Surge again. And let me double check. The Oathbreaker is going to be, uh, the pacification is the Legions, Leader, and Level 2 Forts. So that's going to be a 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So he needs to roll a 5 or a 6. Nope. Nothing happens. So then these guys advance, and they will advance the Quadi to there. Done. And that is their Surge. I think that worked out pretty well. And that clears that off. So that was one card, two more cards to go. Barbarian Siege Forts. Roll a d6 for each fort on the map. If the number is greater, oh boy. Greater than the terrain rating, the fort takes one hit. Or less than, oh God. I am so bad on this. I, I knew this was going to come back and bite me. I can never remember. Is that greater than or less than? I'm going to have to look this up. I can never, ever, ever, ever keep that straight in my head. Go ahead. Make fun of me. Ah, less than. Okay. Google. So that is less than. All right. So now, roll a d6 for each fort on the map. If the number is less than the terrain rating. All right. So we'll start uh, here. That's going to be a four. That's less than. It drops one level. Great. Here, two. Nope. Oh, you guys can't see that. Sorry. That was a six, so no. Uh, this one's going to be a four. That one drops, eh, which means it gets removed. This one, no. And this one's a two. Less than, not equal to. So there we go. So we lost one level two for it. That sucked. I know the alligator eats the bigger number, but it, the, it doesn't have a number. <sighs> I struggle with that, all right? <laughs> this is where I get to say, hey, I'm just a big dumb Marine. So there's that. All right. So uh, that does not go into the surge. And the final one, thankfully. Oh, come on. Really? Fine. Well, at least it doesn't go into the surge. But here we go. So the red will be the top one. Nope. So that's safe. Then the red will be this, the black will be that. They need to be ones to affect it. Nope. All right. So at least there's that. Sheesh. All right. Our turn. So we're going to draw three cards. One, two, three. War atrocities. Roll a d6. On a result of two to six, one barbarian army of your choice is demoralized. If you roll a one, flip all bar bar barbarian armies to their bold side. Well, they're already there, so that's actually pretty good. Okay, but war atrocities, you know, they happen. Single combat. Well, where was this card a little earlier? It would have saved me a card. Resolve this battle by rolling uh, a d6 for each side. The highest number wins. Roman victory. Defeated barbarians demoralize them, retreats, and I gain... Uh, max for free. Discard uh, his card and the card uh, and this card to the history pile. If you lose the battle, deduct two IP. Woo! Eesh. All right. Well, there's that. 
and tactical advantage. Uh, flip the Roman or Barbarian die after rolling it to its opposite side, because it's always a 7, right? So whatever number is the opposite. Uh, you may use uh, this on a 1 or a 6. This can be used uh, in off-map conflicts and in conjunction with the card single combat. Flipping a 1 to a 6 counts as a 6 for purposes of morale and IP. And Ew. Well, that's kind of cool. Well, all right. So I'm going to hold off on that using the, uh, those cards. Um, hmm. Wow, plus I have this to be able to draw two more cards. Oh, now I get it. It's always barbarian cards that go that count either for or against in the uh, in the history pile. But what this means is you if you have to reshuffle, you don't get that card again if you play it for the event. That's the difference. Am I desperate to do that right now to draw two cards? I kind of I wouldn't say desperate, but man that's awfully tempting, and it's early. I think I am. I'm going to use this to go ahead and draw two cards. So that'll go up there. So we'll move those over. There we go. Gallon. All right. Discard for plague, or to prevent pray, plague, and to take an action. Okay. So I think we're just going to go ahead and attack with the action card here. And where do we attack? Well, uh, that's eight to nine. Or, yeah, we'll go ahead and attack the Izagis here. All right, so we're looking at Max coming into play here. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to seven. That's probably not good. Uh, eight to, uh, that's a tie. Yeah, it's a tie. All right, so we re-roll. All right, no hard, I could discard a card for, for a win. I'll go ahead and take my chances. Eight to seven. That's a tie. We'll do it again. There we go. That's not a tie. Okay. So a six for them. Uh, they would go, if they were already demoralized, they would flip to their other side, but they're already emboldened, so or boldened, so that's fine. But this bumps up and we win. So they move back up one. That was, that was effective. That'll work. All right. Uh, so now, could do it again for an eight to eight. Yeah, let's go ahead and use the, uh, let's go ahead and use the gallon card. And I'm going to attack here again with max. And that's going to be eight to eight. So die rolls. Hey, Felix. Oh, wait. Build forts and mark money. Move troops. No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, we're going to attack. Sorry. Eight to eight. Eleven to eleven. All right. Got them, and they're demoralized. You betcha. Oh boy. Um. You know what? Let's let's keep pressing. Let's go ahead and use the war atrocities card since they're already demoralized. And eight to eight again. 
You betcha. Keep on. That goes up there. Way to go, Max. So that's now 10. Hmm. Dewey, 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 Dewey. You know what? <laughs> Let's go ahead and do single combat against the Izagi. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do single combat. Just die roll versus die roll. And remember, I still have my tactical advantage right here too. So, resolve the battle by rolling a d6 for each side. Highest number wins. I'm willing to, yeah, I'm willing to do that. So here we go. And Max is already out, so it will not go into the history pile. If I lose this, I'm going to lose two IP. I'm willing to roll that, take that chance. Well, now, that's interesting. So I will lose this. That still counts, even on a tie. And I will go ahead and play my tactical advantage, flip the Roman barbarian die to its opposite side. So I will flip it there, which then puts that back up there. And... That's a victory. They're now surrendered. Done. Hold on. I think you cannot uh, start a battle and use the event effect at the same time. Uh, it's not a... Normally... Oh, I see what you're saying. I would... Hmm... Resolve the, oh, I still would have had to have played a card to activate it, is what you're saying. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying, Martha. Okay. So if that's the case, I would have had to have, oh, then I will wait. I will hold off. Okay, so I will keep these two cards back in my hand. That battle never happened. I see what you're saying. All right, so the Izagi will stay up there. All right, I got you. No, no, I, Martha, what Martha makes sense. So or what she says makes sense. So result, uh, battle before a die roll, but you will have had to have initiated the battle, which requires a, a, a card discard, which I don't want to use because I want to keep this one in Kate right. So, okay, so I'll hold off. That's it. We're going to go into winter. Fair enough. Now with my one card draw, conceivably, I would be able to do that. I see what you're saying. All right, so there are the three cards for them. So here we go. Plague. Uh-oh. Lose an IP, regardless of how many plague cards are drawn this round. Roll a D6. If you roll a 1, place two legions from an army or armies of my choice into the recovery box. So they're out for the rest of the year. On any other roll, place one legion from an army into the recovery. Ooh. So I'm going to lose an IP, and then I have to roll, and I don't want to roll a 1. Okay. So, damn it. There. And I don't want to roll a 1. Really? So I lose two legions. Okay. You know what? These guys aren't going to fight right now anyways, so that's okay. They will come over here. There. That sucked, but okay. Hey, and the good news is it doesn't go into the surge. All right, next. Death in the family. Flip the Marcus Aurelius leader marker to the demoralized site. He is sad. That's all right. He wasn't going to get used anyways, so that's okay. So that'll go there. <coughs> and finally, Marcomani. Advance them. So nothing happens just because they are pacified. It just goes into the surge pile, which then could be an oath breaker when that fills up. All right, they're done. So now it's our turn. We're going to draw our one card. And now we're going to go ahead and do as, or do we do, do we build forts? Ooh. No. We're going to go ahead and do what I tried to do last term with these. So I'm going to initiate the battle. 
it's going to be single combat, and then I have this in my back pocket if I want to. All right? So there, so single battle. Here we go. Flip the Roman or Barbarian die. I choose to flip, well, this will flip over because he rolled a six. Then I'm going to flip that over and now it goes onto his demoralized side. And then two is bigger than one. Now he surrendered and both of those cards are out. And let's see. Okay, I played it for the event technically, so it goes up there, and tactical advantage goes there. Nice. That'll work. We are two-thirds of the way to winning. We'll see how it goes. I'm out of cards, so we're done. We go into housekeeping. All right, Fort Attrition. Here we go. So this is six only. So my the red die will be the top one. Nope, and red die, black die. Nope, all right. Fort's out of supply, no, we're safe there. No truces. Marcus, he's no longer sad, he's now back to being happy. Uh, no off map uh, conflicts. They are not south of the Danube. Advance the year marker. Welcome to 72. All right, here we go. All right, so they are up, and three cards for the Barbarians. One, two, and three. The Quadi, advance them. Uh, if they're under temporary truce or have surrendered, they have. Then Marcomani, activate instead. I'm sorry, that, the Quadi, they, they, they just move forward one space. Uh, that's it. I, I, I misread it. So they just advance one space. So nothing else. They just come on down right there. Add it to surge. I realize I took a risk with the forts and the whole nine yards. I understand that, but I was willing to. So we'll see. Uh... Unrest in Rome. Discard one hand or you, uh, from your hand or the meditation's holding space. If you do not lose two IP. Hey, you know what though? Doesn't go into the surge. And finally, come on. Markamani, add it to the surge. Damn it. Add the Markamani forward one space or flip, da 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 da. Goes into the surge though, unfortunately, and I can't stop it. Damn it. All right. So, here we go. Uh, we're going to count, there is a level two fort, for, this is for uh, breaking their oath breakers. So there's a level two fort, so that's a plus one to pacify, two, three. So a three or lower and I'm safe. Yay. Okay. Uh, nothing here. Uh, the Marco Mani. So actually these guys would have activated. Back up before we get into. Um, so then these guys activate, they're going to destroy that fort. In or I choose to sacrifice the fort instead of them advancing. So they don't advance, done. And they, uh, right. So now the Izagi, they have zero in forts, but it's two, three, four, five, and six here. So they automatically lose. They're not gonna come back because as long as you have six there, they're safe. All right, so their turn is done. Those go away. Our turn, we're gonna draw five cards. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, you know what, and redeploy. I should have been able, I should have redeployed already. So these guys will have already come out, I apologize. Uh, so obviously I'm going to go ahead and put one here.
I'm going to put one here. And then technically I would have rolled now. So it guarantees the Izagi stay out. And here, that's only at a four, or I could be at a five and a five. You know what? Let's make it that way. So it's five and five. Technically he rolled a one, so he could have come in, but didn't. So there we go. Done. So now it's our turn. All right. Here we go. All right, basic card, basic card. Lectisternium. <laughs> After a barbarian card draw, cancel the effect of the current barbarian card unless it's an off-map conflict. Do not draw any more barbarian cards this round. Oh, that's going to be good to hold into my back pocket to keep from surges and stuff. Concessions. Lose an IP and cancel the results of an Oathbreaker check or the event card Rebellion. If played for the event, discard to the history. If used to cancel the effects of a Rebellion, place the Rebellion card in the Barbarian discard pile, not the history pile. All right? And another basic card. Okay. So I think we're going to use this to go ahead and build forts. So I'm definitely going to build one here, and I think I will go ahead and build one here. I'm going to use another basic action card to upgrade this uh, level one fort to a level two, because that's now two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to use the other basic action card to upgrade this to a two. And now that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So they are, I'm not going to say permanently pacified, but you get the idea. Okay, so now I will go ahead and use concessions here to go ahead, you see basic cards, I see forts, right, exactly, right, there you go. Uh, can't, I, wait, I, oh, I didn't think you could have multiple leaders, am I wrong? Because I said that during the teaching, hold on. I don't think you... Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you can have multiple leaders in the same, in the same spot. Uh, on the same, uh, on the same army. I do not believe so. I'm going to play it as such. So that said, I'm going to use the concessions to go ahead and fight here, and it's just going to be used as a regular attack. So it will go there. So that's going to be uh, 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 1 for the fort is 10, 10 to 7. We win. He moves back there. And I'm going to stop there. I'm good with that. Okay, so we're going to go into a new round here. Barbarians draw three cards. Here we go. 
Good omens. Flip all barbarians to their bold side. Already there. So that just goes away. Done. Bad omens. <laughs> Roll to determine which barbarian army flips to their demoralized side. All we care about is a three or a four. Come on, three or four. That'll do. Quite a flip. Hmm. And those auguries. You got to be real careful. They're fickle. Whoo, good omens, bad omens. I feel like that's a book. It's a joke. I know it is. Marcomani. Da 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 da. Don't do anything. And it goes into the surge, though. Okay. That's about as good as I could have hoped for. And the bar uh, art cards. Now we get three because we are in, uh, in summer, summer campaign season. All right. Basic card. Basic card. Temporary truce. Place the truce marker on one barbarian army that is north of the Danube. That army doesn't move for the rest of the year, and you cannot attack it. Its cards are still added to the surge pile. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. All right. No, no, I don't think we're going to mess with that. Um, but what we are going to do... He's now attack right now, so I'll use a basic card to attack. So I'm at 1, 4, 10. He's at 7. That'll work. Moving on back. He's at 10, and I'm at 9. Do we press our advantage? Do we press? Do we press? Yeah, let's go and use that. Uh, we're going to use the basic action card and we're going to attack. We're at a minus one, essentially. Well, that drop, and uh, that wasn't good. Okay, so he goes from that to that, and I. It's my first lost battle, by the way. Uh, so let's see. Barbarian win. Romans lose one legion from the battle to the recovery box. The second legion falls. Okay. Well, I think we're going to hold on to this one. You know what? I think I have a plan. We're done. We're going to go into winner. He's going to draw three cards. One, two, three. Okay. Here we go. Ooh, Bellamar. Flip the Marco Mani to bold. Uh, okay. Well, do an Oathbreaker check first. All right. So the good news is Marco Mani, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six. Failed because six or higher. You can't roll higher than a six. So, okay. Uh, no, no, no. If you can't attack, you lose, but do not discard the card to history. If you lose, they advance one space. Well, they can't. Like, the card can't happen. But it says, okay, if you can't attack, you lose. But you don't discard it to history. Okay, so that means uh, uh, I lose an IP. Yeah, I need to be careful with this. Now that's getting a little scary right now. Um, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. You know what?
Yeah. I'm going to play uh, that Lectin Sternium card. After a Barbarian card draw, cancel the effect of the current Barbarian card and do not draw any more Barbarian cards this turn. Done. All right, so that actually didn't happen. So that just goes there into the discard. These will come back there. His turn is done. I'm going to draw one card. Philosophical Inquiry. Choose one card from the Roman discard pile and play that card instead. Then discard it to the history pile. Wow. Hello. Okay. Well, allow me a moment. Play it right now. That or forts, right? Okay, so that's a possibility. I think I found my card. Yeah, I think I found my card. I think it's worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the philosoph philosophical inquiry. And Marco Mani are quadi fronts only. I'm going to flip two level one forts to level two. So this will go into there. So that goes to a level two, and that goes to a level two. I think that's what I want to do, right? Or I could put out... Or I could place a level one and flip uh, one level one to a level two. I think actually I'll do that instead. So I will place a level one here and instead I will just flip that one to a level two. That'll work. I'm done with that. And that will go into the history pile. Done. That'll work. All right. And the meditation, the truce marker might come into handy. Uh, so there we're going to go into housekeeping. All right. So here we go. So housekeeping, attrition for every fort, a roll of six wrecks it. So red die, black die. Nothing. Red die. Black die. Nothing. Red die, black die. So that's red die. Ouch. Um, so that drops it to a level one. Yeah. All right. Not the end of the world. All right. So that is our attrition. Nothing. None of the forts are out of supply. There's no temporary truce. Marcus is not demoralized, no off-map conflicts, the Quadi are not south of the Danube, advance the year marker. We're into 73. All right. His turn, draws three cards. You guys following along, everything making sense? You guys enjoying this? All right, the Quadi, advance them, forward one space. Uh, add this card to the Surge. If the Quadi are under truce or surrendered, they're not, so don't worry about it. All right. Okay, so they just advance one. Hmm. I'm going to let them. I'm not going to stop them with a fort. I'm going to let them come there, and that goes into the Surge.
Yeah, I'm okay with that, I think. Okay. So next card. Legions demand uh, donative. Place a mutiny marker on any army led by Marcus Aurelius. Okay. And it says pay one card and one imperial uh, imperium to remove it. Uh, it cannot be activated until you discard one card from your hand or meditations and deduct an IP as well. Mutinous troops do not count towards pacification value when rolling for Oathbreakers check. Do not remove this marker during housekeeping until it is resolved. Ouch. Okay. Well, that goes away. <clears throat> okay, last one. Izagis, but it goes into the surge. Okay, so these will go. So the Izagis activate, they can't. And now there's going to be Oathbreaker. Fail, right? Because this is at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. They fail. Uh, two, three, four, they fail. So now the Quadi, do I want to let them advance? If I want to let them advance, then I keep the fort. If I don't, I destroy the fort. I th think I'm going to let them there, and then these go away. No what, Kushigra? All right, so we're drawing five cards. No, I'm okay with it. One, two, three, four, five. No, I, I, I disagree. I, I, have, I have some ideas. So I'm going to pull this card back just so we remember it's in our hand. Basic. Foreign Treaty. Automatically end one off-map conflict. If played for the event, discard to the history pile. We haven't seen one yet, but okay, noted. Divide and Conquer. After a Barbarian card draw, select one Barbarian card activation from the most recent draw and move a different tribe instead. If you use this card against the Izagi Cavalry, uh, the alternate tribe only moves one space. Okay. Barbarian Informants. Look at the top five cards of the Barbarian deck. Reorder them uh, how you like and put them back on top. Yeah. All right. And Goddess Fortuna. Reshuffle the Roman deck. This includes all cards from the discard pile. You know what? Hold on one second. I feel like I forgot something significant here. There was one little gotcha that I told myself not to forget. Uh, give me just a second here, guys. Ah, that was it. If you drew an off-map conflict where one is already active in that space, return the card to, that you just drew, discard the Barbarian cards uh, to the deck, and shuffle them, uh, all the discards, back into. But we haven't had an off-map conflict yet, so we haven't forgotten anything. Yay. All right, excellent. Hey, Luke. Hey, Chip. Okay. Um... All right, so first things first, I'm going to use a basic action to flip that fort to a two. So let's go ahead and start there, and now we're going to attack. I'm going to use the divide and conquer, because that doesn't really come into play right now, as the attack. So I'm at 
to, oh, I forgot about this. Hold on, I have to pay a card and an IP. So there, I paid the card and the IP. Oh, this is, oh, this is tough now. I need one attack. You know what, this is going to happen anyways, so I'm going to actually use the Goddess Fortuna to go ahead and attack. He's at a seven. Oh, and this is removed now. They've been, the bribery or the, the blackmail has been done. So that's three, eight, nine, ten. He's at seven. Ten to seven. We win. He moves back. That's good. Okay. So now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine to nine. Do I attack or do I bump that up to a level two? We're going to use the Barbarian Informants to go ahead and attack. And it's nine to nine. It's three, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. So straight up card draw. It came out. It was that, but it came out. So it gets re-rolled. Re there we go. An Imperium. And he goes back. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. We're done. His turn. Holding on to two cards. So three get drawn. Here we go. Izagi. Nothing happens but goes into the surge pile. Okay. Uh, Kastobochi. Lose one IP per year until resolved. Oh. Oh, we have our first off-map conflicts. Uh, place this card in the Eastern Empire off-map conflict space. If the space is occupied, shuffle the da da da, da. Okay, well, it, I'm glad that actually um, that one little gotcha rule is actually on the card, so no big deal. So in the Eastern Empire. Okay. So I'm going to lose an IP every year until resolved. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, well. And we have a Western conflict, a Western Empire conflict. Well, shoot. Okay. I mean, it was bound to happen, right? Lose an IP per year until resolved. All right. So we're going to draw three cards now. One, two, three. We'll see, uh, we'll see what we're going to do about these. Basic... Rain Miracle, Ro uh, battle b uh, before die roll. Automatically win the battle you're fighting and gain an Imperium point. Danube front only. This event may not be used in an enemy's home space. Well, I can't win the game with that, in other words. But we can just beforehand. Uh, if played for the event, discard the pile uh, to the history pile. That was fortuitous time. I mean, it is called a miracle for... <laughs> miracle. All right. Add the uh, 22nd Legion marker to any Danubian uh, army or off-map conflict. If played for the event, discard to the history pile. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and start this out. Basic, we're going to fight. Oh, hey, it's a miracle. Oh, that goes to the history pile. There. There. I was 12 to 9. Well, I was good, or 9 to 12 in that case. Um, I'll go ahead and play the Foreign Treaty to get rid of one of those. Uh, does it matter? 
Might as well go for the harder one. So we'll go ahead and put that into the history pile. Okay. So they're at 13. I need to be able to bump them down somehow. You know what? I think I stopped there. Uh, this, I guess, technically can be a print and play, but it's not. This is the actual published version, Sue. Uh, Sue Park there. All right. So we are going there. So the Barbarians, draw three. Aquati, uh, move forward one space. <sighs> Damn it. Okay. Mm. That sucked. Damn it. Oh, come on. Stop that. Really? All right. So they... It, uh, do I want to... You know what? Okay, well this goes over into the Surge, but they're going to destroy the fort instead, I've chosen. So, everybody else activates, it's 6 to 6, they cannot come out, so that's done, and that, Quadi don't reactivate because they were the ones that actually activated that. Alright, last one. Quiet on Danube, well, that's unfortunate. Do not draw any more Barbarian cards this round. Well, I wasn't gonna. Alright. Done. Our turn. We draw one card because we're in winter. Harsh winter. <laughs> uh, no barbarian cards are drawn this round. Before a card, uh, barbarian card draw. Oh, damn it. I can only keep one of these. I'm leaning towards keeping this one but they don't advance one for the rest of the year. Man, that's really good. They would just be, oh, that would allow me to get a bunch of cards. I th oh. So what do I do with these cards then? Do I not worry about the off-map conflict, right? And just punt on uh, the one IP for this year? I think so. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Harsh Winter card to build two level one forts. So there's one there. And one there. Yeah, and then I'm going to use this just to gain an IP that I'm about to lose for that. Oh. oh, it's a paper map, or it's a thick paper. It's not like paper, paper, but yeah, it's not cardstock either. Hey, Scott. Yeah, all right, so we're done. So housekeeping, now we're going to roll for forts. All right. Red, black die, sixes are the only bad thing. Think other numbers. That's good. Then we'll do uh, black, red. Ah, oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucked a lot. Both of those die. Black, or red, black. Nothing. And then uh, red. Okay. Nobody is out of supply. No temporary truce yet. No uh, off map. I do have one, so that will drop because of that. Um, done. We're into 74. And you know what? Oh, and now 
This will come back. The second legion will come here. Everything else will stay. I think that definitely is happening. You know what? I don't think I really care. No, I just don't care about it. I'm just going to let it go. That's fine. And yeah, so it's his turn now. So he's drawing three cards. Here we go. Plague, lose an IP, and then roll a D6. Anything but a one. <sighs> Come on! Lose an IP. Come on, man. If you roll a one, place two legions from any army or armies of your choice into the recovery box. So, I... Oh. Man, I don't know. Maybe I kind of punt on this year. I think I do. These two are going to go into the recovery. Yeah, golly. All right, next. Marcomani, nothing but add it to the surge. Marcomani, nothing, add it to the surge. Okay, so I'm drawing five cards. One, two, three, four, five. That's the end of my deck but we will reshuffle. Seize the initiative. Discard this card to make two attacks on one front. And you have to make both attacks regardless of what, uh, un unless you have no legions. Publius Helvius Pertinax. Uh, pay an IP to add him to any Danubian army or an off-map conflict without a leader. Okay. Also, add both Danube fleet markers. Eh. Honestly, at this point, eh. Ambush. Eh, ooh. Ooh. Add three to the Roman battle roll. If you win, flip the barbarian army to its demoralized side and retreat it one space. I feel like this is going to be really important. For each surrendered tribe, deploy one army from the recovery box to any Danubian army. Here we go. I right, here we go. Hold on, that may have changed things. All right. So let's see. On the uh, Izagi's front only, place two level two forts on any eligible spaces. Uh, well, that for, oh my. Okay, we're not gonna punt on this turn on this year then. And we have this. So I'm gonna go and play this as the temporary truce. So oh no 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 because I'm gonna attack him. Hold on. I'll start with return of captives. For each surrendered tribe, deploy one army from the recovery box. So, two surrendered, these two come back. Hey, they're feeling better. There, done. Then, I'm gonna use this 12 to 9, that's 12 to 12. I'm going to build two forts. One, two. Then I'm going to play Seize the Initiative, but I'm just going to play it as a battle card. And Marcus is going to come fight. They're at a 12. I'm at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to add 3 to the battle roll. So that's 10 plus 3 is 13 to 12. I'm at plus 1. Plus 1? That, uh, that works. They go to the demoralized side there and retreat.
I'm at 9, I'm at 10 to 11. You know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Let's try it. And if it doesn't work, I can play the truce. Possibly. Sumatia card for an attack. I'm at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm at 10. He's at 11. We're at minus 1. One time. Come on, one time. Boom! He gone. However, when do we check that now? The player wins of all three barbarian armies have surrendered before the final round of the year. We won, but now we need to check here uh, for score. Let's look. If you win, count the number of years left on the year track, including the end space. One, two, three, four, five, six. Add this to one point for any barbarian cards in the history pile. Seven. Then add uh, to this your current IP. That's nine. Divide by two, round up, so that's five. That's my score out of ten. Five out of ten. Psh, I'll take it. What? Mm. Didn't even get to the late war. A, I couldn't have rolled better, and B, I ran hotter than, well, that, that was fun. That was fun. Um, so let's see. Uh, what do I think about it? Let's take a look at this. Believe it or not, it's, it's tough. It really does feel like a States of Siege, or uh, I think that's what you call it. Um, you know what I'm talking about. But I feel like it does have a bit more... Uh, decision space in this with that surge mechanism. I do really like that. Uh, obviously, I got lucky that the off-map conflicts really didn't come into play much until very at the uh, right at the end there, and it was kind of a moot point. Uh, if you don't like dice rolling, you're not going to like this game. But for this being a solo, super tiny little, you know, solo experience. Yeah, it's a fun little dice chucker. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, <laughs> Edward Aurelius. I like that. Uh, yeah, I think this is totally fine for what it is. It, it fits that. It fits that. That niche for hey, I just. I mean, we're talking. It was about two hours with talking through everything and the whole nine yards. So yeah, I'd say ninety minute little solo experience. The setup is like stupid easy, right? I mean, you have two decks of cards. You have the late war cards that get dealt into each of the two decks respectively. Uh, and then you have the fort chits and then a handful, and I do mean just a small handful of other chits. You know, the truce tokens, you have the Danube ones, a bunch of mutinies, whatever, etc., etc. And that's it. That's all there is to this game. So there's not a lot to it in that respect. But, yeah, I think that, uh, I think that was a really good, uh, enjoyable experience. Also, um, this works really, really well once you know the game and you kind of get into a flow. However, I do wish that this one had details on the attrition housekeeping, which this one used. So I kind of use both of the little player aids that are on BGG, as well as looking up a couple things here in the rule book or whatever. Uh, but other than that, that was a lot of fun. My, I guess, like, com uh, component critique, I, I wish the dice were, were two different colors instead of all the same color. Um, now, full disclosure, this is Andrew's copy. So these might not be, 
These might not be the dice that come with the game. To be clear, they may or may not. So I shouldn't say that. I don't know. Uh, it's a paper map. And yeah, I guess I can show you guys that real quick. Give me just a second. And I'll show you this. Um, there, just making sure I don't mess. Uh, I don't want the late war cards in. There we go. Cool. There. And then, there we go. So it's a paper map, but it's, 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 it's not quite cardstock, but it's not computer printer paper. So whatever weight that would be, you guys probably know this stuff better than I do. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, honestly, I could have put it under the plexi, but it lays flat enough to where I really wasn't worried about it. I didn't think I needed it. Um, but yeah, this is a, uh, I mean, it's print on demand. And yeah, I don't know if they do a, a mounted map or not, but yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, Kusha Girl says, I can see this game go wrong in so many ways. Yeah, that's, it just didn't today. It went really, really well. So I'll take it, all right? Um, yeah, and, and that's the other thing. I suppose you could do, you know, make your own whatever, but uh, the print and, play, print and play files, I believe, Hollenspiel sells those, so support them there, and they're a tiny little publisher. So consider picking up the game if this is a game that you find enjoyable, then go buy it direct from them, support them. Um, it's a win-win for everybody. I don't think it's too terribly expensive either. Uh, oh, and the, uh, and the, the uh, footprint is typical Holland Spiel, so it's about that thick, right? And it's that box right there, all right? So there you go. That is uh, The Wars of Marcus Aurelius. Kicked butt, took names. Good stuff. So big thanks uh, to Andrew for letting me borrow his copy. Big thanks to all of y'all out there that joined me on this Sunday. Hopefully you guys are having a good weekend, as I mentioned. And uh, big thanks for the support, for all the patrons who choose to support the show and help me uh, continue creating content for a living and doing this full time for you guys. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. So thank you. If you guys enjoyed the uh, playthrough, give it a thumb. If you didn't, Give it a, the other direction thumb. But you know what? Leave a comment down below and tell me why you liked it, why you didn't like it. Constructive criticism. Always trying to get better. Certainly would appreciate it. Other than that, uh, I'm supposed to be back tomorrow with the weekly look ahead. Provided I can get everything to uh, James in time. If not, that'll be on Tuesday. Uh, so, uh, a couple of just housekeeping things. Number one, uh, Jess is going to be recording a top ten. Uh, she got invited to do that with Rado. So if you guys listen to Rado uh, talks through, um, Jess is going to give her top 10 in that. On Tuesday uh, will be part two of the episode that uh, JT and I recorded last Tuesday. So the front end, as far as, you know, what we've been playing and all those things, normally it's about an hour, you know, what we've acquired, all that stuff. We talked about an obscene amount of games, and it lasted about three hours. We never made it to clinic. So uh, part one is going to be released upcoming this week, uh, and that's going to be all of that. And then the following week, we're going to release the set part two of the episode, which will be our review of clinic. Going to be re uh, recording that on Tuesday with JT as well. Then more playthroughs later on in the week. I am going to take one day off next weekend, though. Just just got an Oculus. And that's a really cool toy. I really want to play around with that thing. So there you go. That's all I got. Uh, go Canucks. Congrats on making the, uh, the playoffs. Go Reds. Um, stay safe. Wear your mask. Be respectful. And be kind to one another. It just uh, isn't hard to be kind to one another. Do that. Join me for the weekly look ahead, whether that's tomorrow at noon or on Tuesday. And I'll see you guys later on this week. Oh, and if you guys haven't heard, the Golden Elephant Award finalists came out. Go check that out. It's on a playlist somewhere down below. Take care, everybody. I think I might, I think I might ask uh, that I go by that. I, I like I, when I'm introduced. Whenever I go places, it's. I kind of like that. Yeah. Edward Aurelius. That might stick. I'm just saying. <laughs> I kid, I kid. And no, Luke, go Canucks. <laughs>